for today is Oracle ace, Jorge Rimblas. Mr. Rimblas has been an Oracle database professional since 1995, and he's accumulated over 20 years of experience, mostly in the Oracle applications implementation and customization arena. Since 2008, however, he has focused exclusively on Oracle Apex. In addition, he has successfully managed and mentored developers in various projects in industries such as automotive, food, healthcare, logistics providers, financial services, manufacturing, retail sectors, and more. In 2014, Jorge became a member of the Oracle ACE program as an ACE member. He's, well, he's a well-known speaker at conferences like Armug and uh, UTOUG and ECO and ODTUG's Kscope as well and Oracle Open World. In 2016 and 2017, he served as the Apex Content Track Lead of the ODTUG Kscope Conference. And in 2018, he was the traditional content chair responsible for all content for the database and Apex tracks. He was also the guy with the camera who took a lot of pictures. And now let's begin. Jorge, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mark. Appreciate that introduction. Hi, everyone. Uh, glad you're here. This is a favorite presentation of mine. I think this is a fabulous topic, and I'm very, very happy to share it with you. And uh, I, of course, I gotta, I gotta address this title, which I think is very uh, pretentious, uh, definitive guy. Who, whoever thought of that title, but you, you will get a lot of tips, and I guarantee you'll be able to use them immediately. Uh, some of them maybe even today. If not, you you may want to wait till Monday, but you'll be able to use them right away. Um, you can find me on Twitter at at Rimblas, and that's all I'm gonna say after that wonderful introduction. So, I like to start talking about what are our goals for this presentation, and my my goal is to help you be comfortable enhancing report layouts. Uh, there's a lot we can accomplish with report layouts, and your applications can really shine when you can present data in a friendlier fashion. So our agenda will be, we're going to talk a little bit about patterns for presenting data. Uh, we'll address it with the classic reports, and then the custom name templates, which are incredibly powerful. How we can do some of this with interactive reports and interactive grids. And then a topic that I like to call single line alerts or messages. So the patterns for presenting data. Um, one of them, of course, is tables. And when I say tables, we're going to talk about the HTML elements, uh, the table tag, the TR for table row, and TD for table data. These tags make up the most of what we see when we see a table. Uh, the HTML will look like this. We open the table, we open a row, and then we'll have a TD open and close tag for every column of data. And then in Apex, we're going to have some substitution values where whatever we're selecting from our columns will be injected in, in these values. And when you select left aligned, centered, right aligned, that that's a command that gets injected in this alignment uh, substitution string. And the header for your column also gets placed here, although this is more uh, informational in the HTML, this is not visible information on the page. So if we had a report, this being a standard classic report from Apex, and I do an inspect of a cell, uh, you'll be able to see that all the values, this uh, product ID, this value two trousers and black trousers suitable for every businessman are visible here in the HTML. So the value two, the trousers, black trousers, and so on. Now, what do I mean by inspect? So if I, if we go here to a page, this will be an old hat for many, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click and I'm going to select inspect, and this is going to be available in most browsers, uh, actually on all your modern browsers. And when you do the inspect, you go to what's called the developer tools or the inspector, and here are the elements. And as I move my cursor on top of each of the those uh, HTML elements, you can see how the top is changing and highlighting. 
And here you can see what I what I meant, just like this that screen, how the HTML is formatted. So that's going to be a pattern for presenting data. But we also have lists. With the lists, we're going to have mostly what's called the UL tag, which stands for unordered list, and LI for list list item. There's also an OL tag which is the ordered list, but that one we don't use as much because what happens is it actually numbers each element of starting with a one and it starts numbering the element. So UL is more, most common because we usually want to show bullet points or nothing. Like in this case, this is an actual um, list and I can actually right click and inspect and I'll be able to see, let me close that and make this a little bit larger you can see how the UL surrounds all of the entries and each list element is an LI. And if I expand it, we'll see here's, here's the X. And if I expand the other one, here's bread. Let me close that back and continue. So that's gonna be a list presentation for data. Now, um, here's the full structure and if we were to parametrize this, we can have the LI and here's our, our whatever content we want to inject will be inside the LI tags. And that's, that's what in Apex sometimes we'll see as the for each row. For each row, this is what's going to repeat. Now, the surrounding tags, those are going to be the before rows and after rows. And the table has the same thing. It's just a little bit more verbose. There's a little bit more text. There's the before rows will be the table and everything we need to specify the headers. And then for each row where we could have uh, the TD elements. So let's look at some examples. Of course, we have the very simple classic report. But what's interesting here is that in this report, and I'm, I'm just going to switch to this page to see it. The highlighted values are because of the available is set to N. And this is a modified template. And I'll show you this shortly. Um, we mod I modified the template and I said, if, uh, if we get an N, I'm going to add a highlight class. And that highlight class, I defined it as, as this background color. So if I switch this, you can see how that color changes. For, for example, I'm going to just force it to something uh, horrible or very, very strong to emphasize. So there's the red, right? Now, if I refresh the page, that goes back to the way it was. So that's a that's very simple example. And okay, that's not that exciting. But what about this one? What if I told you that this example here was also a classic report? And this is a classic report that has some sort of level. Uh, we have a table that has something that we can call faces. So new documentation, pre-audit, code and review, those are faces. And then we can have steps inside those faces. And those steps are, are kind of like a to-do list. They're checkboxes that the user could check and say, I'm done, I'm done, or this one doesn't apply, so they check it off. And uh, it, it will record when somebody did it. So this, is, this was done with a classic report. Here's another example, which we're going to take a deep, deep dive uh, throughout this presentation, where I'm showing people and the ways to contact them, the phones and the emails that we can use to contact them. We can have a uh, title or position for them, and if they're active or inactive. So we're going to cover this. This is another interesting example, and everything within the uh, this line. So right after men's, men's would be the region title and everything else was a classic report. And this, um, I changed the data to protect the company, but, uh, you can get exactly the same idea. We have sub levels where we have, um, brands and types and then items. And then we switch for the type and we go into items. So this was also created as a classic report.
Now, within classic reports, most of the time, if you just create a classic report and you just uh, you don't change the default standard template, what you're getting, what we're using is the generic columns. And what that means is that every every column has the same same template. And that's exactly the, the, the example we saw a moment ago when I was looking at the, showing you the HTML. Every cell, every TD cell is exactly the same. However, there's another type, which is the name columns. And in that one, we specify a template for the whole row. And that's when the power starts. That one's very powerful. So let's talk about the generic columns. That's where I said you have the TD and you have a value. And this value comes from your column, from your select statement. So every, every column looks exactly the same. And it's that example we're looking where whatever we're selecting, it doesn't matter if they're different values, right? It doesn't matter if we're displaying the ID or the product. The, the content of the HTML, they all look the same. They're shared among all the cells. And using a condition on those templates, we can switch to highlight columns. So how, how is that done? Um, the way that's done is with column templates. And um, instead of showing you this right now, let's let's just open it over here. I'm going to edit this page. And I'm going to go into not the region template, but the attribute template. So I go into the attribute. Here's my, my simple query, right? Nothing surprising there. Uh, let me let's make this slightly larger. I'm going to go into the attributes, and here I created a template called product template, and that was a copy of standard. So if I switch to standard, it will look we will lose the highlight. We lose the highlight and. If we go back here and we go to the product template, what the product template was is a simple copy of the standard. And I'm going to show you how that's done. We're going to, I went to share components. I go into templates. We're going to find the templates for our reports. And when you find standard, you can click on this button to make a copy. So when you click to make a copy, I give it a new name and an identifier, and we got an identical copy. So that identical copy was this products template. And the only thing I did here was modify. So I didn't modify the before rows. Remember the before rows? That's all we need to set up the table and all this stuff. We're not even going to look into that. I'm going to go into the column templates. And I what I did is I take the first column template and I added the word highlight to it. And then I added a condition. I switched this to PL SQL expression. And I said, if my product available is N, I'm going to use the template that says highlight. And I took the original HTML, so this original HTML, and I used it down here minus the highlight, of course. That, that's the way it was originally, without the highlight. I put it in column two with no template. So what Apex is going to do is it's going to go down the list of this column templates from one through four. There's four of them available here. And it's going to look at the condition. The first one that's true or that has no condition, that's the one that's going to get used. So we use this one when the product available is N. Otherwise, we use this other one. And then we get this effect. Did I save it? Yes. Now, if you want to review that when you when you get access to the slides, which you will, you can just click on this blog post, and this blog post uh, explains those steps one by one. Now, let's go talk about named columns, which is the powerful feature. It's called named columns because if I had a query, any select statement, every column gets its own substitution token that matches the name of the column. That's why they're called name column templates. 
as opposed to the other ones, which are generic, and they just get every column is just called column value. And Apex will take care of grabbing one and using this, grabbing the next one and using that one. So that's going to be the name columns. They match the name. You could also use positions. Uh, and this is going to be useful when you have a more generic template where your query, you may have multiple places where you're using it on different queries. An example is similar to how the universal theme does the cards template where you can use it with whatever query you have. That's kind of similar how that, why this positional is good. Now I try not to use it because uh, by next week, I will probably not remember what number five was as compared to number three, right? It, it might be, it's kind of like not quite documented, if you will. So let's look at the list. Um, let me look, let me show you this example, this list template. Here, this is a classic report with a list template. And what this list template is, is basically I'm selecting my to-do elements and I'm saying that if, if the completed by is null, I'm gonna have nothing. Otherwise, I'm gonna have the word check. Um, and that's because that's because my to do is going to go in this portion of the template and checked is going to go here to use font awesome. And hopefully you're familiar with font awesome, um, or font apex now actually, which just by the way, went open source. So let's go, let me show you here how this, this works, this icon thing. So I went to, uh, hmm, let me do this so I can show you. I'm actually gonna show you that you go to apex.oracle.com slash UT for universal theme. And I should point out that if you go to apex.oracle.com slash shortcuts, you get to tons of useful shortcuts to lots of things. And the one I'm using is this one for universal theme slash UT. So I'm gonna click on that one. I'm on the UT one and you're gonna click on icons and you can find all sorts of icons here. So if you see I'm using here FA check and square. So let me show you what square alone is. So if I just look for square, there it is. It's like an unchecked checkbox, right? If I go back here to my, oops, that's a wrong place here. We have the unchecked and we have the checked. So all we gotta do for the check one is add the word check. And I'm using this one, check square O. Okay, so I just have to add the word check in here to make it be checked or unchecked. Hopefully everybody can see that. Um, so let's go back to this example. So the word check gets injected here and I, I concatenated this, this dash here just to, just to kind of show how really we're just checking it and unchecking it versus uh, leaving it empty. So the benefit of this, this approach is that we're really using a standard classic report. And let me show you something. So let's go back. Let me move my windows here. I'm going to edit this page. I'm gonna show you how we have the, the just the standard query with the elements I'm showing you. And under attributes, I set it to this template called simple list version one. And well, if we take a quick look at this one, we see that it's simply for row template one, we simply have the HTML I was showing you. Let me show you that. This LI with the to do and the fantasm portion. 
So here's the Phantasm portion and my to-do. That's all I'm doing, right? Very, very simple. And going back to it, I'm going to I'm going into the to-do column. If you notice, the other columns are not showing, right? The to-do owner, completed by, completed on. It doesn't matter if you have them to display or not. They're not part of the template, so they don't get used. But the to-do one, I'm going to switch it to a link. And I already have a modal page, which I believe is 221, hopefully. Uh, yep, 221. I'm going to pass the ID of that to do. Uh, 221. So, by doing very standard, switching it to a link, just like we've done hundreds of times, now we're using the same template and now it's a link which I can edit. And when I enter a completed by, that milk element is going to switch. Now, a much more advanced template to this here in version two, the same data, and now I've added dynamic actions where I can, I can just click on these elements to set it or unset it or delete it and even drag and drop. But it's exactly the same template just with a lot more el uh, elements to on, or dy standard dynamic actions for the click and standard dynamic actions for the delete. So as as you add new entries, you have you can have a dynamic action on dialog close to refresh the report. You can do a standard refresh. You can have the edit links. They work just like any other classic report. Questions so far? Jorge, uh, we don't have any questions. So um, if anyone has a question, please enter them in the uh, um, in the question zone uh, in the presentation. Thanks very much. Thank you. So let's go into a more interesting example, and we're going to look at more detail here. How do we mix layouts and do more advancing? So how is this created? First, let's go into that example. Let's say we have our clients. I edited. All right. I, sorry, yes. I just want to interrupt you. I, I do have a first question. It comes from yes. Kevin Zhang. And the question is, is sample apps can be downloaded somewhere? The sample app I'm using, yes, it will be available for download. Um, actually, uh, that's a good question. I, th I believe it's already on GitHub. If, uh, if you go to... Uh, we will we will add a link within the presentation. I this is this is not the right sample app. So, but yes, it will be on GitHub and it will be a link from the presentation. Thank you. So here's the example where we have the data and let's activate James. We click edit and we're gonna make him active. I click apply changes. So now it jumps to the top and now it's active. Let's add another contact. So you could add another phone number or I can add an email. I'm gonna add an email. I'm gonna say he's Jack Ryan. Roger, Jack Ryan is his personal email for James Halpert. Maybe some of you get the reference, but maybe that's his personal email. And then the 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 template adjusts to to show multiple entries on how to contact someone so that's how oops that's how this contact list is going to work so let's let's break it down there's actually two types of rows in this template one for the person name and their title with with the check mark and another one for how to contact them one of them we for the first one, we have a table row, a table data that spans two columns. Why two columns? Because we have two columns for the contact, right? The the when we have main and email, those are the two. And we'll have an edit button, we have a name, the role, and a font for for that. The other entry 
there's actually two TD elements, one for the type and one for the for the entry itself. So those those two are two different templates that or two different types of entries that we gotta that we gotta use for our data. So let's look at how our data may look. Let's say I'm selecting the parties and the party name, the role, the name, and we have these two templates. So how do we start using this? So one thing to note is let's focus on a single record. Let's say uh, I'm, I'm focusing on record 41, right? Only one record. The challenge we have is that for this one record, I have the name and I have the, the way to contact them. So I need to use this HTML and this HTML. Both of them need to be used when we have a single contact or for the first record. So for a single row, we use both types. Or said another way, uh, for the first party row, we gotta use both rows. So how do we do that? If this is our data, what we want is to focus, we wanna do something special for those first, first entries for each person. The first one for Dwight, the first one for Michael, the first one for James. Then for the other entries, we're gonna do something different. And we don't care about the names, right? We're just gonna get, we're just gonna ignore them because we already use them. So a brief parenthesis here to talk about analytic functions. Hopefully some of you have used analytic functions already. With analytic functions, there's one called row number. And this is very useful in that we're gonna say that after every party ID, whenever we switch party IDs, and, and we're gonna order our records by party name, but whenever we switch party IDs, we're gonna count again the rows. So for Michael Scott, we get one, two, and three. For Dwight, we get one, two, three, four. And then when we switch party IDs again, we start at one again. The reason that's useful is because now we can, um, we can concentrate on those that have a one, right? The ones that have a one, we're gonna do something special. So that's, that's gonna be a very useful analytic function for us. Jorge? Yes. Sorry, it's Mark. Um, uh, we have a question from Rohit. Uh, and the question is, how about the success and cross sign in the dot, where there's a, there's a period at, after the word the, um, but his question is, do we need to make some modifications in the template? or is it coming from the data of the report? Hmm, uh, for what part of data? I'm sorry, I'm probably not understanding where. Uh, yeah, the question may have been uh, slightly incomplete, so we'll wait until he, he resubmits it. Also, okay. Melody Sager has a question, but we'll hold off until the very end because it's a, uh, it, it's, uh, she mentioned if there's time left for it. So okay. I'll, I'll ask you to continue, thanks. Sounds good. Okay, so there's another analytic function that may be useful and that's the count. The count analytic function will count how many are within that same uh, partition. So we can see here that we have three records for Michael Scott, we have four for Dwight, we have one for James. The reason I mentioned that is because sometimes, some templates, you'll need to do something special at the end uh, so you can close your tags and you can do something different for the last record. So our last record will be that one that has matching row number and total rows, right? And my last record is gonna be where RN is three and total rows is three. Here the, where is four and here's four or one, one. So we're not gonna use it for this template, but I thought I mentioned that it's, it's come up before where I'm creating something more complex and I need to have a specific template for the last record. And if you wanna practice more or learn more about analytic functions, I highly recommend this uh, KISS series on analytics by Connor McDonald. This is a fabulous series of short videos. They're uh, two to three minutes long and they focus on, on different analytic functions. 
So getting back to our example, we add the row number to our query and our condition, of course, is going to be Rn equals one, right? Where our row number is one, we're going to do something special. We're going to use the name of the person and how to contact them in that whenever Rn is one. So I'm going to just edit this template just to show you a little bit of how it looks. Um, don't be scared by the by all of the HTML. It's um, go here to the attributes. There's there's a, a few extra things there just to make it look pretty <laughs> and, and to add the CSS. But for our first row, we're going to have you can make out here how there's a party name, a role, and then the type of entry. And here we have the two entries, right? So this would be like email or, or, or phone, and this would be the, the actual email or the phone number. So that's one. And we have that RN equals one. And for all others, we simply do um, this other template where we show the type of entry, if it's email or phone, and, and the value itself. There are some limitations. Yeah, oh, go ahead. Very sorry. Um, uh, Rohit has uh, brought back uh, the question. And um, here is this question. We are showing tick sign and cross sign to find whether the contact is active or not. Um, yeah. How okay. are we getting those signs rendered in our report? Okay, great question. Uh, that's also using the font awesome. So if I inspect this, actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna make this one. I'm gonna switch it to active now. I'm gonna save it, and of course now it I have it so that the inactive ones jump at the bottom. So I'm gonna inspect it. All right. So in this one, I. Maybe it's not the best example here uh, for Fantasm, but I'm I'm using two different uh, classes that I define. One with a check Y and check N. If I do a check Y, it switches to a to a yes, to a check mark when it's yes, and N switches to an X. But it could have been simply what we were doing with the Fantasm, where we have this check, we would we would just write FA check and it can come from your query or not. The, the, reason, the reason I'm using this uh, custom class, it's really an alias for that icon, uh, just a Y or an N because my query only has to return a Y or an N for the, for the active. I just switch that and this one switches. But you could return on your query, you could return, return FA check or whatever icon you want for, for the X, which is times is the, is the one for the X. I, I went with this approach as well, because then I can set the colors. Um, where's the color? Do, 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 do. I'm gonna click it here, there. So here's the green and here's the actual, don't get too distracted by this, but if I inspect the font awesome side, this is what I'm gonna see on the, on the CSS. And if I switch this to a to an N, and I go into this one, now you see the red and a different value. But that value is really coming from from here. If I go here to this before, here's that value I'm showing, right? So I can make it here color red. And you can see how it switches there to red. Yeah. So hopefully that kind of over explains the question. Thanks so, very much, Jorge. Um, yeah. We have another question from Adam uh, Nadolski, and he asks, how might you have implemented this if the data were normalized differently? And in parentheses, with the party and the contact info in separate tables. He's referring to the the before yeah. your uh, yeah. you answered, Rohit. That's a great question. So actually, in the in the original, the real application, they were separate tables. The original application had no limitations for the number of uh, contacts that you could have 
uh, or ways to contact a, a person. They were denormalized, they were separate. Um, but I, I joined them and created a table, sorry, I joined them and created a query that returned this. So imagine that this is a view on your denormalized data with, where you're joining uh, the, the way to contact on the party. Yeah, so it, 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 it's, it's really the same solution, right? Uh, imagine that this is a view on all your tables. Uh, I'm, I'm putting them together because I, you're gonna need them together to represent it this way. Okay. I guess I guess I misspoke on the using denormalize and normalize, but yes. So, uh, yeah, just imagine that this is a view, and you have your your tables for how to contact them or not. I did this for sake of explaining explaining the concept a little bit easier. Okay. Good and question. we mm -hmm, we have a, another question from uh, from Rohit. Uh, will these font awesome classes for Apex 4.2 as well? I'm assuming he's meaning will these font classes right. work for uh, 4.2? Um, they they don't come with Apex 4.2, so you got to include it your, yourself. And to do that, um, font Apex, and I uh, actually, you said font Apex. I don't know, maybe somebody knows the link. Let's see. Font Apex was just released, uh, and I want to say this week. Uh, we'll go through here. So you could. Let's see, is it in this about? The short answer is yes, they're available, but you need to include the files that make up, that brings the font itself. Okay, that's the, that's the short answer. Um, let's see, font index. Uh, we have a uh, an additional uh, comment by Justin McRae, and he says, I yes, included sir. Font Awesome in my templates in Apex 4.2, and it worked fine. I have since upgraded to 5.1 and changed to Font Apex, so it does work. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it absolutely works. It's just you have to include the the actual library um, for the for the font, whereas in Apex 5, um, I don't in a in Apex 5, I don't have to do anything. I just uh, I just specify the the fonts that that we're talking about. Yeah, in Apex 5 and above. Great. So we'll let you continue. Yeah. Any no, I'm sorry. And uh, any more questions? Uh, no, no, all good so far. Perfect. So there's some limitations. You uh, we we are talking about a lot of HTML here for some of these layouts. Um, the templates are sort of reusable, but you, um, if you have specific names for your columns, you, you have to keep them as they are. Um, so they're almost like very dedicated, but I don't think that's a problem because you're delivering a higher quality product on, on your layouts. If you add new columns, uh, if you, if you notice if the columns are not referenced in the in the template, they're not displayed. So if you add new columns and you want to display them, you'll have to modify your your templates. There's only four conditions, and for very complicated layouts, that's not enough. Um, the first one of the first examples that I that I was showing with the Nike or not Nike or the tennis shoes, um, that one uh, required all four all four positions. And if we had any more groupings, then we would have had to use PL SQL probably to, to render it. That also brings me to potential pagination issues. If you need to paginate at a point where you haven't closed all your HTML tags, your layout will be broken. Um, the example I was showing a moment ago with uh, the, the example with the contacts doesn't suffer from this, although we're displaying all contacts right now. Uh, but some layouts may be incomplete, like something is not closed when it needs to paginate. And one workaround is to make sure that your pagination is such that you close HTML. It gets, it, it gets kind of complicated. Like you have to control how many rows you display at a time so that you're 
exactly closing the tags without leaving in a in a bad state. So that's a complicated way of saying be careful with pagination when you create some some of these templates. There's some limited support for interactive reports and interactive grids, but let's look at them in a moment. Now, before that, before we look at that, uh, let me show you HTML expressions. Both classic report and interactive report have a feature called uh, uh, HTML expressions. So let's say I have a query. I'm gonna use this HTML. I don't need to create a template to display my book information like this. All I need to do is choose one of my columns and inject it as a HTML expression. Let me show you the example. So here's the standard classic report, just a select of my data. And here's the one with the HTML expression, totally different. And here's the one with an interactive grid, which looks exactly the same, except for uh, I still have the column, uh, the header column. That's gonna be my one difference with the interactive grid. Sorry, interactive report. Well, actually an interactive grid as well. You could do it with both. Let me show you how this, this word this is, that HTML expression. Um, every column on the query I'm gonna go into the book name. Every column will have this HTML expression under column formatting. And that's where my HTML went. The other columns are simply hidden. I don't wanna display them. And my template didn't change. I don't have to create a template. I'm still using the standard template. So many times that's, that's gonna get you there. Uh, you have some layout that you need to, to use. You can place the HTML here. The other thing you want to do, actually, the first thing you don't want to do is you do not need to turn this off. This is the default. Strip HTML is the default for the columns. And many times this, when you change this, that's a, that's a cross-site scripting risk you're opening a vector for cross-site scripting. Cross-site scripting is similar to SQL injection, but it has to do with JavaScript on the browser. And we're not gonna go into that topic, but that is, that is a serious problem. And this technique has the benefit that you leave your columns protected because each one of uh, these values are still scaped. If they contain malicious JavaScript code, it's still scaped and uh, we don't have a risk because the column is still protected. So we leave that and we're turning off the headings so that it looks a little bit uh, neat, if you will. And probably you wanna turn it off because if you were to export, you're really just exporting the one column. In my case, I mean, I would be, exporting the book name, because all the other ones, remember, they're hidden. And HTML expressions don't get downloaded on a CSV download. They do not. And that's our final result. Let's talk about the detail view. So remember this structure where we say that for each row we do something and then we have a before and after rows. Well, the interactive reports do get this column called, uh, or this, this feature of detail view. And the interactive grid does as well. So let me show you the example. If, um, actually I'm gonna switch apps for this. I'm gonna show you what this is. Uh, in, the, in the interactive grid cookbook, I'll give you a link where to get that, but the interactive grid cookbook is a special type of sample application uh, where I'm gonna go into IG cards, interactive grid cards. So what this is, this is an interactive grid that looks nothing like an interactive grid, but it has some, some JavaScript so that when you click on this 
uh, buttons, you change the, the layout and you can say only one or two or three. And it's, it's just using the universal theme template for cards. I'll show you what, what, I'm, what I'm talking about. So this is going to be a standard query, right? It doesn't matter what we're selecting. Um, I'm going to go into attributes. And here it is, detail view. When you turn it on, you get something for your before rows, something to do for each row, and something for after rows. And what's been done here, here's the values. Here's a font awesome icon. Here's the name and category and gender. All, all those are columns in my query. So if I go back to the application, um, here's the icons, values, buttons, names. All these elements are in that HTML. And it's an interactive grid, but it's doing that fancy layout. And it's not for editing. You would have to switch the mode to not edit. Now, we're not going to go into JavaScript that makes this happen. But in this application, you can, you can look at that. Um, and a regular, regular interactive report. So I'm going to go into this sample database application, which hopefully many of you have seen. When I go into the products, that's an example I had on my slides. There it is. By the way, there's also this icon view. And here's the detail view. And if I edit this page, you'll see exactly the same thing where detail view is turned on. And then there's some HTML there for the what to do for each row, for the before rows and for each row. Here we go. Scroll down. Here's the icon view. We're not touching that. And the detail view. Turn it on. There's some stuff there for before rows. There's some stuff for each rows. There's what to do for each other rows. That example I was talking about for the interactive grid is going to be right here from John Snyder's The Interactive Grid Cookbook. Lots of stuff to learn about interactive grids. That you're going to click on that link and you're going to be able to download that that special application with lots of examples. Okay, finally, uh, we're going to talk about the single line alerts and messages. In this example, there's a classic report somewhere in here. I'm actually going to try to show you that uh, right here. This is an internal app and if I switch this value, as I switch it, this report refreshes. So here I have a different value. And if I switch here, I get a different value. And if I have nothing selected, my button is grayed out, and this gives me the value. So how is that done? That is my classic report. And we're going to go into that in a, in a moment. And this is another example. This is another classic report. This is like a warning. I can have this region that gives me a warning. And I can say, uh, you got to do something for these users and give a warning. So we'll break that example in a moment. So how is this one done? This is one subregion. So everything's one region called billing. And the filters has these two, two items. And here's the classic report. And then we have the button and the legend. So how do we do that? Well, we're going to use the HTML expression. This is simply an HTML expression where I have, there are some value, there's many time entries, uh, and my other value. Whatever message we got to do. So it's a simple, very simple cl classic report where I'm using the HTML expression to plug in the values. My columns are still escaped. I can use any HTML I want in here. So for example, here's the I'm making it making this value bold. And I remove the pagination so it doesn't look like a like a report. And I've also 
under attributes, I've also removed the headings. I said no headings. What I'm left with is a is a simple a single cell that um, appears as a sing, single message. So that can be a very powerful tool you can use to display messages. If you've done something similar, you probably used items and you refresh the value of the item and then you use some jQuery to go and inject it. It's cumbersome. Whereas with the classic report, it's so simple. It's just a query and a direct display. Let's look at this other example. I'm gonna go into into this example. So let's say we have this alert. This is very simple to do. I'm gonna edit this page. It's also a query as complicated or as simple as you want, okay? So in this case, I'm hard coding my value, so I don't have any, any logic. I'm just getting a name, a company name and an ID, right? But really the only value I'm using, if I go here to full name, that's the one that's plain text. The other ones are hidden columns. I have them there just to show that only the, the, the one I wanna display is that. And look what I've done with the heading. The heading is, is the message I wanna say. So, oops, um, um, let me drag it over here. There, so here's my heading, right? The heading is what I wanna say, and the value is what I'm selecting. And I don't have anything else to do here. But here, where's the trick? The trick is I switch the template type. Normally, we always use the theme ones and we use a standard or we create a new one. Well, I switched to a predefined and there's a few here. I'm doing it, I'm using the vertical. So the vertical is gonna show it as, show my columns as value pairs. So then I, then I get this value. Uh, so the label and the value side by side. And I could, I could also, maybe bold my results. So I could take this full name and I can do a bold, oops, I need to tokenize it. Close the bold, save it. And now the name will be bold. And there it is. And uh, of course, to make it look pretty like that, my region is an alert region, which comes with the universal theme. Um, sorry, that's the title. Uh, I'm pointing on the wrong thing. The template, it's an alert region. And there's a few template options here. So uh, I have a warning icon, maybe what if it's uh, just informational? I'm gonna switch it to informational, switch it, run it again, come on. So now this icon and the color changes. That's part of the universal theme. If you don't want the background color, there's a template option for that as well. So we have a heading, we have the value. And as I mentioned, um, we uh, under attributes, we're switching the template to predefined and vertical and turn off the pagination. So we've covered a lot uh, on this hour. We talked about classic reports on conditions on the columns. We talked about the name column template. We talked about the detail view. We talked about this single line messages, either a classic report that returns some one liner or uh, the, the value pair side by side report. And all those things, that there's multiple options you can use here on, on what you need. Um, now, I don't think as PL SQL developers and Apex developers, um, sometimes we're not gonna be the ones coming up with HTML to, use, to do something. I'm gonna just show you a super quick example. And we're almost out of time, but 
I took the HTML for this. This was for Kscope. This was the agenda. And I took this HTML and I plugged it into an application, into our report. Let me show you that. And right now it's a little bit, uh, it's not as perfect, but I'm gonna go into my session counters for Kscope. I'm gonna run this. Actually, I'm gonna show you where I put it. So I created a report where I'm selecting the sessions. I created some of the data and um, under the detail view, I simply started plugging in that HTML. So here's the HTML I grabbed from that website, right? I didn't come up with it. I just copied it from that website. And here you can see the start time, the end time, the title, and so on. And when I run this page, you, you get a result. Whoa, my session expired. Um, the CSS is not there as perfect, but no, it is, it is. So you can see how it's, it's starting to look almost like that one. Almost like that other, other website. So if I go to this one. So sometimes you'll be given a layout. You may be given some HTML and you'll be able to figure out a way to apply it and use it on your, um, on your own projects. So you may not need to come up with the HTML and the CSS, you, it may be given to you, but now you have a technique to use it. Do we have any other questions? Uh, Jorge, we currently we do not have any final questions, but uh, now's the time to ask them if you um, if you wish. Uh, however, uh, Melody Sager came up with a question that we wanted to leave to the end to see if uh, you had time to squeeze this in, and um, she asks if you can do a wait pop up walkthrough. She says I have a few interactive reports that are long running. Okay, all right. Let's see if uh, and that's totally not related to this this. Webinar, so let's see if uh, any other questions come up. Okay. And if uh, just not, to remind everyone, we will be uh, we will have this recording uh, on our website within a couple of business days, and also uh, all registrants will will receive a link. Um, I have a question here that says uh, I am with a background of Oracle EBS and Oracle PLSQL and slowly migrated into Oracle Apex. Apex. Uh, that's the reason I'm not able to use HTML or CSS uh, to its potential in Oracle Apex. Can you suggest something to start learning it with? Start learning uh, HTML and um, CSS. Yeah, so the, um, it, it's going to be like drinking from a fire hose. Uh, the, the, the good news is that everywhere there's going to be information. I don't have a particular resource, um, but because the world is now surrounded by web technologies. It is really so easy to to find HTML information. You're you're really gonna find it everywhere. I I don't have a specific resource for you. I'm sorry, um, but yeah, uh, perhaps. And this is more on the CSS CSSTricks.com. Uh, oh wait, let me do it over here. CSS tricks. Try that one. Um, that will take you more on the CSS side, but HTML, you kind of pick it up on the fly because it, it looks a lot like XML. With EBS, you've probably already done XML. Uh, there's only a handful of tags you got to learn to to get good at using it. So CSSTricks.com has, it's a great place that has also some videos and recordings of how to do things. So that might be a really good place for you to start. Uh, we also have another question from Bozo. And he says, how can we make a browser button in IG to do CRUD action over blob column? This option existed in tabular forms. Um, I, <laughs> I don't think I can answer that. Sorry. Um, Okay. Yeah, that 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 will need some no some looking into. Um, maybe there's some examples in the cookbook. I, I would definitely start there. That would be my first place to start. Okay. 
and uh, Justin returns with the question. I made a classic report to make a dynamic collapsible regions based on a column break. However, I had to do a lot of template work and the HTML work in the query itself because of the column breaks. Is there an easy way to deal with custom reports and column breaks? E. Um, you're probably looking at a plugin. Um, those, that's a hard one. Um, the column breaks, you, you almost have to code them some other way. I, I don't, the problem is once you do a column break on a classic report, Apex takes over on that HTML. You don't, con as you already discovered, you don't control the HTML for the break. Um, and that, that messes with this technique. So you almost have to code it yourself. Now there's a fabulous plugin on, let's see, exit full screen, apex.world, go to the plugins and the nested report plugin might be something that may fit you. Uh, it's almost that, that functionality and it's, it's a, it's a fabulous plugin, uh, nested from previous, previous. So here you can see what it's doing. It's kind of just drilling into reports. So maybe maybe that fits your requirements. And one last question from uh, Bozo Stanjonovic. Uh, do you have some example of multi-level drag and drop list? Multi-level, hmm, that's a challenge. Um, no, no, um, I have, I have a video and a blog post uh, where I do drag and drop. Oops, that was the wrong link. Well, it doesn't matter. I'm going to go here. And, um, and if you search for drag, drag and drop, here it is. So here's here's the video and here's the blog post. And uh, I did the blog post so I could, so I, I myself could copy paste some of the, some of the code and the video, I kind of walk you through creating it. But I totally understand what you're saying, the, how to do it multi-level. No, I don't. Sorry. I haven't worked on that. Okay. I'm going to squeeze one more question in here again. Um, uh, Evil Brewer uh, asks, how can I get a button of field next to IG header? And then he uh, writes, of equal or. Mm. Um, I don't think it's possible because the header itself is a clickable element, right? So whatever button you try to put in there is going to be wrapped by that. So you almost have to inject it, like hack it, if you will. Somehow you find it and inject it. There might be a way, but I think you're just going to, yeah. I, if I understand your question, I, I think there's no clean way to do that. Oh, he corrects that of was a typo, it should be or. So it's or equal or, mm. uh, and mentions JavaScript probably. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You're, you're gonna be injecting it into, into it. Yeah, I, I don't know if there's a natural way to do it, but again, uh, look at the cookbook. Um, look at the interactive grid cookbook uh, application because there's fabulous examples here. Um, in heartlikesoftware.com, you download the cookbook and there's a gazillion examples in there. You'll be surprised how much. So maybe maybe that can help. Okay, I, th uh, I think that pretty much covers our questions uh, for today. Okay. Um, and now, um, if you have time for, uh, for Melody's um, question about... Um, sure. Or, yeah. I think at this point we can uh, we can say thank you to everybody that that came to see uh, this webinar. If you want to hang on to uh, see something unrelated, uh, you're welcome to stay. If not, <laughs> thank you very much for for attending. Thanks everyone, and please uh, please remember that you'll re you'll be receiving an email for the 10th of October uh, for the uh, the next webinar by Anton Nielsen. Um, and uh, we hope you can join us for that. Uh, currently, our website is still uh, not available, uh, so uh, please be patient, and thank you for your patience on that. Uh, and for all those who have to leave now, uh, we really appreciate that you uh, took the time to, to spend with us. Thank you. The website should be running on Apex. <laughs> um, I, didn't, I didn't say that. All right, so let's see.
we're gonna so i have a little background on this because melody was looking at wait pop up so i have a blog post where I was talking about how the weight pop-up API got enhanced on Apex 5.1. And what it is, is you can call apex.widget.weight pop-up on an Apex page. So uh, let me go to another example. Um, let's, do, 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 let's go to an Apex page. So it really doesn't matter which page it is. And if from some code, uh, you run this jet, run a dynamic action, for example, you get this weight indicator, okay? Now, how do you get rid of it? So the blog post is to say that you can't get rid of it unless you reload the page. So normally if you have a long, long running something, when, when you branch somewhere else or the, the page reloads, it just goes away. The page reloads and it goes away. But what if your page is not gonna reload? Well, then what I'm saying is in the blog post is declare a, a variable where you call that weight pop-up and this will now have a method to that, which has a remove method you see there. So now I can type that value dot remove and it gets rid of it. So, if you have a long running something, whenever you, on, on the click of that button that's gonna start something, you want to start the pop-up like this and save the return value from it somewhere in a variable. So you save it, you're running, and then when you know you're done, then you remove it. So that's that's the concept. now. As for the mechanics, it really depends on how you're doing it though. Um, if, if your long running thing is in a process, you don't have to worry about removing it at all because your process, before you start the pro, when you click the button, you start the weight pop-up and then, um, and then when the page reloads, it'll go away. Now, let, let, me, let me show you another, another approach. Maybe that will help better. Your button to do something could also do, uh, instead of having Apex submit. So you could do, here, let me show you a button. A button to save, like this apply changes. Your buttons to save actually have a Apex submit call, there it is, okay? So if I call this from here, Apex submit with a request of save, it's exactly the same as if I was clicking the button now. Why am I mentioning that? It turns out that there's an option there, and how is it called, is it wait? Hmm, I have a cheater app for these things. Hold on. Um, Apex dot submit. No. Um, is it? No. Apex submit. This one. There it is. I'm going to bring this over here. It turns out you can have here the save. So, but you could also optionally pass items. And this is documented on the API, by the way, for, for Apex submit. You could pass items if you needed to, I'm not going to, or you can say show weight true. If you do that, now your button will add a weight thing. Now um, it's gonna be very brief, but you'll see a weight and then the page reloads and it goes away. That makes sense? So probably what you wanna do is go to your button. I'm gonna go back to that page. I'm going to edit that page. I'm gonna go to my button. Of 
course, we don't have time to wait. Come on. I'm going to go to that button. And instead of being a submit page, you're going to change it to redirect to URL. You're going to place that, that code there. This was a save, so that is still a save button. And the show weight set to true. And Java script. There you go. So you tell it that that URL is, a, is actually JavaScript code. It's going to call a big submit with a request of save and show weight is going to be true. Save it, save changes. And now when I run the page, I'm even going to close that. So when I clo click on this button, we're going to see the weight indicator. And then when the page reloads, it just goes away. And there you go. Maybe that's maybe that's a better approach to uh, what you're doing if you have something that takes a while. George, thank you very much. Um, thanks for that extra time and answering that extra question. Uh, and I just wanted to point out to uh, Revocatus, who who's uh, wanted to ask one question. Um, I would please ask him to ask it by writing, and we'll answer it uh, uh, later on because our session is, has been finished for. Uh, for about 10 minutes now and we're, we're continuing on. But uh, for all of you who, uh, who stayed on, and there's a, quite a bunch of you, thank you very much again. And uh, we hope that you'll join us for our next webinar, um, uh, October 10th. Uh, and watch out for that in your mailbox. Uh, you'll be getting that notification soon. So once again, thank you very much from everybody here at Ensum. And have a great Friday and have a great weekend. See you all, take care. Thank you, George. And for those that uh, follow me on Twitter, I'm gonna I'm gonna tweet I'm gonna tweet that little bit of code that we were just doing, so you can see it there. All right, <laughs> take care. All right, thank you, everyone.